The big three down to one in last night's game four against the Bucks after Kyrie left the game with a sprained right ankle midway through the second. He went up for a layup, came down hard on Giannis's foot. Now there is the distinct possibility of both Harden and Kyrie being out for game five. So the load will fall to KD if this is the case, who last night held to nine for 25 from the field. Here's Steve Nash after the game. Yeah, uh, Kai, uh, x-rays are negative, but uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, tomorrow and further tests and, and treatment. Um, yeah, obviously, obviously we, we lost a great player uh, during the game, which was tough. We all got to pitch in. We all got to play together. We got to move the ball. And, and I thought tonight we got a little single-minded looking for Kevin every time. Puts a little bit too much pressure on him. It makes it a little more predictable, I thought, um, you know, which, which puts a lot of burden on him. All right, final score last night, 107 to 96. Freddie, we'll start with you here. Can Durant win a game without the other two members of the big three? I don't believe so because you look at that starting five that he has. This is the worst starting five in a playoff game that Kevin Durant has ever been a part of. I mean, think about this. This may be the worst starting five that Kevin Durant's ever been a part of since his first year in Seattle. When you take out a Kyrie Irving and a James Harden, we don't know even if Kyrie Irving plays in game five, what kind of compromise situation is he going to be in? Because a lot of his games is based on movement. He's got to have that movement, that great handle, that great dribble. And now you have to have Joe Harris and Blake Griffin play out of their minds. I'm not buying that from that standpoint. Unless Kevin Durant scores 81 like a Kobe Bryant did not too long ago, that's the only, only way that I believe that he'll be able to do that and win a game without those two guys. You're expecting guys who know their roles to go above their roles and as great as Kevin Durant is. Now he's got to be a playmaker, facilitator, leader. Well, we've wondered about there, Kevin Durant, at least I have from the standpoint of that you don't have to worry about being a leader on the basketball team because that's why he went to the Brooklyn Nets and why he was suited for that role to be with this team and letting somebody else do that. Well, now that has to fall on him, and he has to do with the guys that I mentioned when it comes to guys that have to play above their roles. So as great as he is, unless he scores like 81 points, I don't believe he can win one game without – Kyrie Irving, and also James Harden. Who knows we're going to see those two guys for the rest of this series against the Milwaukee Bucks. You don't think KD can get a single game, Freddie? While no. 81, I know, 81. is a bit of hyperbole, right? Sure. In theory, KD does have the skill set that would allow him to do that. Here's what I think is different from compared to some of those teams that maybe didn't have as stout a supporting cast as we've seen KD be a part of in, in Golden State or even Oklahoma City if you want to go that far back. KD has grown tremendously, right? I think he is a better basketball player than he was when he got into the league. I think he understands the magnitude of the moment. moment. And quite honestly, if Jason Tatum can get you 50 to allow a Boston Celtics squad get a victory versus the Brooklyn Nets with two of their three superstars on the court, I believe that KD does have the superstar caliber DNA that he could help elevate this team to that moment. And furthermore, beyond that, I don't know that I trust the Bucks that much that it is out of the realm of possibility. A single game, Kevin Durant can do that for you. He is that caliber talent. Now, the series, that's a different story because I do think that the Bucks uh, can continue to make adjustments and make it very difficult for him. But mm -hmm. my good friend Justin Tinsley at The Undefeated has this uh, mathematical equation for playoff series. Two, one, one. And two being your superstar has to carry you and get those two wins and then your supporting cast get that one and one. If Kawhi Leonard can do it for the Clippers, I think Kevin Durant can get it done for the Brooklyn Nets. Not that it's an easy task, but one game, I think KD can give me that. You are, I'm going to use these numbers. Milwaukee has two to Kevin one, Kevin Durant's one. And those two dudes right now, Chris Middleton and Giannis Antetokounmpo, are going to be better than that one with, Ke with Ke Kevin Durant. That means you're telling me, Monica, that Kevin Durant is going to match their production, which means 68 points. He's not going to be able to do that. And right now, Chris Middleton and also Giannis Antetokounmpo have a better supporting cast right now than Kevin Durant. I'm not trusting that Joe Harris, who's been one for the series so far from the three-point line, is also going to find that touch, especially when everybody's going to load up on Kevin Durant and you're going to have to have the ability to make shots. And Joe Harris has shown so far in this series that he can't shake loose from that defense. And even when he was been wide open like he was in game three, he was not able to knock down shots. Those two guys right now, Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton, are not going to face the defensive pressure from the Brooklyn Nets the way that Kevin Durant is going to face from the Milwaukee Bucks defense. Because I know if I'm Milwaukee, if I'm Mike Budenholzer, I'm loading up my defense and saying, Kevin, you're not going to do anything. We're going to double and triple team you, which means that Blake Griffin will have to go back into the hot tub time machine and be Blake Griffin when he won the slam dunk competition. <laughs> and then that Joe Harris is going to have to win the three-point shooting contest running away. That's a lot to ask from those two guys to replace Kyrie Irving 
and even James Harden even come near their production to give yourself a chance if Kevin Durant's going to go above the number that he's going to have to go above to find a way to make sure this is not a 3-2 series and going back to game six down 3-2 against Milwaukee. Freddie, where we agree is that it would be certainly a tall task. And I happen to believe that the Slim Reaper is up to get it done, easy money sniper. But I will say this, how quickly we forget that we are only two games removed mm -hmm. from the Milwaukee Bucks looking, um, let's just go with crazy in the first two rounds, right? Like, I don't know that I buy that they have completely turned over a leaf and that Middleton and Giannis Antetokounmpo can continue to make up for, what, 76% of their offensive uh, production. So while I think that we agree in that it being a tall task, I'm not necessarily sold that the Bucks are so fortified that we can't see them have a hiccup that resembles those terrible performances of game two. Now, listen, a series is a long, what, seven games potentially? Mm -hmm. So I'm just not that convinced that the Bucks are that stout and locked in the rest of the way. I think Kevin Durant can carry it. Shooters got to shoot to make shots, and shooters shoot got, have to shoot to get hot. And so for me, Joe Harris, Landry Shamit, Jeff Green obviously back on the floor in the most recent game for the first time in a long time, all those guys have to continue to keep playing. And what we did see from the supporting cast for this Brooklyn Nets squad, in the absence of all three of their stars, is that they are willing to play hard. I think some of the nuggets in terms of the wins that this Nets team came without those big three. Obviously, we know they didn't play a ton of games. So those guys are capable of playing hard and getting after it for you. I am not sold that Giannis and Chris Middleton are so far gone that KD can't catch them. If some of those guys show up just a little bit, he can get Monica, you one, Frank. A little bit. <laughs> they don't have to show up a little bit. You're right. They're going to play hard. They better produce hard. It's not about playing hard. But, You're supposed to be playing hard at this point. But producing hard, that's asking a lot from the people you just mentioned, whether it's whether it's Michael, Mike Jones, whether it's Landry Shamit, whether it's all those guys. Now you're asking them to go above and beyond what they've been able to do in what could be an elimination game for the Brooklyn Nets. Because if they don't win game five, they're not winning game six in Milwaukee. This series is going to be over, and the Milwaukee Bucks are going to be on their way to the Eastern Conference Finals. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.